All right, so the missing part of the equation is this, a model with textures, right? Okay, so what I did, I imported this in to show you what that kind of looks like as far as, you know, go, stop, still works. How do I get that in here? Well, there's a material. Okay, so I'll make a new material here to show you how easy it is. What I would suggest to you is keep your materials uh, within a materials directory. So if I went in here and just say create material, it creates a blank material. And here is my bumped diffuse material. And you can name that, you know, wolf material, whatever you want to name it by just uh, lightly clicking on it allows you to do it. Let's say I call this wolf material two, just for giggles. And these are JPEGs that I exported out of um, ZBrush. So, and I think I had to take them into Photoshop for a second. Now, does that matter? No, in fact, um, Unity even accepts PSD files. So anything is doable within Unity. I changed them to JPEG because of the simple fact that I'm going to present this online. So I would want to do that in such a manner that they're JPEG images, just to streamline the process a little bit. Also, under the JPEG, I can allocate the texture size for detail. All right, so I got my color map and my normal map. So they go like this. Color map goes here, bump map goes here. And on my Wolf and Hunter model, what I would do is just have this and I can click and drag it down here if I wanted to and right on the model. So this right here is a prefab, this one. Underneath the prefab is your actual mesh. And I did have color for the eyes, but I didn't import those in. But there we go. Now, as a presentation tool, this is quite powerful. I can see flaws in my own model in game now. Like that belt buckle right there. Notice it's shiny. Okay. There's a reason for that, and I'll tell you that in a second. As I go around here, let me kind of critique my own work because this is first generation model that I created a while back ago um, now you know it's kind of it's kind of limited because we have higher capacities on video games now so this is a good model but I would say it's lacking here's the little things that I see like this buckle needs to be fixed this buckle needs to be fixed this I can see through so I know that that has to be a double-sided object at this point Okay, I'm seeing a lot more of those. Usually now what we do is topologize over the entire model with all the assets right there, and that would make it into one chunk. This is a multiple chunk model, meaning it has multiple uh, meshes all stacked up on top of each other, which is totally doable too. Um, you'll just have flaws every once in a while. This buckle has two objects right next to each other, and that's why it's shining. So what you're seeing is a back face problem uh, due to the fact there's two, two meshes on top of each other. So that is a cool effect that you can do to make it shine like that, but it's not what I wanted. Again, I gotta get the eye texture in here. All this stuff I'm seeing now because I was able to get it in an actual game engine though. Okay. Another thing is, later on down the road, as you're exploring Unity, think about this. If you have several models, like if you have the wolf and, if I have a wolf and hunter, some armor, etc. and so forth, I could have buttons over here that toggle between the actual models. Uh, that might look nice. Uh, a veritable speed upon rotation would be nice. How about the ability to go back and forth? So there's so much there's so much to this, but this will at least get you started. And as you go on, you know there is a repository of of goodness here at the Unity website. So let's let's I'll show you that and let you explore it. And I think that would make a great assignment is uh, the actual 
uh, placing in of, let's say, a nice slider there that variable speeds the speed attribute. Oops. What did I do here? There we go. All right. And let's see. On the internet, that place that we go to every once in a while to learn stuff. Uh, Firefox. Now, I would say the community is the strongest one, and there is a resource library on the wiki that goes into a lot of this stuff. And I know wikis are like one of those things that instructors give you to just shove you off. Uh, this is not the case, however. So this has a lot of things in it, but there is a, ni a nicer location to find some other things. Let me check on my laptop here to find the actual URL to that because it is a very, very powerful place. It is just not documented too well. Ah, that's because it's not documented too well. Because it's it's funny that I say that it's not documented too well. Because it's actually under documentation. <laughs> funny. Okay, and here's an example. And there's a reference manual. This is what I'm talking about. The reference manual has a GUI interface down here. And that is located. GUI scripting guide. And in here, you can find all the information I just gave you, plus a lot more. So here's the one we just went through. Okay, I just tied it to code instead of, and here's your application load level. So if you want to load from one level to the next using a button, let's say this scene is considered a level. Okay. And if this is a level, and it's called Wolf Unity. Okay, let me save this. And there's Armor, that's a level. Okay, so these two are levels, and what makes them levels is this. Uh, under Build Settings, I have Armor, and I have Wolf. Those two are now levels. So, if I wanted to switch between levels, see these ones and zeros and twos? That's these numbers right here. So, I could say load level uh, one, which would be the wolf. And I could say load level zero, which would be this one. So, it already gives you the code for that. I just placed that in relevance to it. In the next video, what I want to do is I'll port this to the web. So, that's the next step. All right. So, on to the next video.